Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, and it's a topic on many lips here in the expat community, is the topic of, wow, it looks like foreigners may actually be able to own Thai property, own land in Thailand, specifically residential. Now, as a preface to this video, a lot of I'm not going to, I hesitate to say there's any misinformation. I don't think anybody's intentionally out there, you know, I, I really don't like use of the term anymore, you know, misinformation, disinformation. You know, there's information, there's data, and how you analyze it, that's on you. But I, I do have to say there seems to be a lot of presumptions and assumptions being made out there right now with regard to this overall issue at a time when, quite honestly, it's very much not a well-sorted, you know, it's not a well-settled development. We're, we're, we're not in a well-settled conclusion on this, and I'll explain why here in a minute. So, first of all, we're going to go over to the Patia Mail, patiamail.com, articles titled, Foreigners Can Buy 1,600 Square Meters Residential Land, land in Patia, Bangkok. And I, I, it's not so much a critique of the actual body of this article so much as sort of the tone of it that it's like this foregone conclusion that this thing is done it's a done deal this is now possible that's just not true and in fact i think there's a lot of nuances going into whether or not this does come to fruition and if so how it does if it's actually going to be something people are going to be able to use broadly but that said it's not a critique on the party mail it just i've seen this a lot it because of the way it's put out People think that, oh, wow, this is happening, you know, this is like, this is occurring, this is being promulgated. As we'll get into in a moment, not so much, but I wanted to quote directly, the Thai cabinet on 25th October 2022 approved the Interior Ministry's proposal allowing foreigners to hold land ownership for up to one rye, around 1,600 square meters, for residential purposes. The proposed scheme aims to stimulate, again, and even their language, it's not incorrect, it's just, it's sort of the tone. Again, they, they mentioned this is a, the proposed scheme. It, it's still proposed. And quoting further, the proposed scheme aims to stimulate the country's investment and economy by attracting foreigners to Thailand, creating more investment. So, yeah, I, I think that's probably true. Although, as I'll get into and in maybe a little bit more of my analysis on this at the end, I don't actually think if this goes through, it'll bring in just oodles of money to Thailand in terms of property development. Yeah, it'll bring in some, but I don't think it'll be a huge amount, especially in the short term. And over the long term, I do think that there are significant causes of concern for Thailand should this policy be promulgated. I'll get into that in a bit. In any event, um, just kind of on this assumption that this is all kind of locked in, not, very much not the case, as evidenced by a recent article from the Bangkok Post, bangkokpost.com, article is titled, Government Stands by Land Sales to Foreigners. Again, the tone is like, yeah, this is happening, but when you get into the meat and potatoes of it, it it's, not, it's not so cut and dry. Quoting directly, the government has defended a bill to allow foreigners categorized under four specific groups to apply for permission to buy up to one rye of land on the condition they invest at least 40 million baht for at least three years. The bill is simply an amendment, and see, this is interesting. The bill, the bill, this isn't a law. This, this is just processing right now. Quoting further, the bill is simply an amendment to the ministerial regulation that has been in existence since 2002, said government spokesman Anucha Borapachaisri. And then they kind of go into some information about who's going to be eligible for this. As we've discussed, it's primarily occurring within the BOI, and it seems to be sort of pertain to these sort of long-term resident visas, so-called not actually long-term resident visas. They don't provide residency, sometimes called 10-year visas, not really 10-year visas. It's sort of a five and five thing. They've also got some other issues associated with them, which we've discussed at length in other, in other videos on this channel, most notably things like volunteering for tax audit here in Thailand and some stuff like that. But again, quoting further as to the eligibility on the land issue, High wealth individuals, well to do pension, and I'm quoting high wealth individuals, well to do pensioners, work from Thailand professionals, and highly skilled professionals or specialists are the specific groups being courted, he said. Quoting further, the cabinet agreed with the proposal at its weekly meeting on Tuesday, and the bill 
is now being reviewed by the Council of State, the government's legal arm, he said. So again, legality on this is not a foregone conclusion. So sort of, you'd be kind of the equivalent, I guess, of like the Attorney General's office in this context uh, with respect to like reviewing, you know, bills being proposed by the administration in the United States or maybe even the Office of Legal Counsel within, within the U.S. apparatus would be kind of analogous to who's looking at this right now. And again, it remains a bill, and I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, quoting further, in practice, these potential foreign investors will have to first meet the minimum 40 million baht investment requirement before they can apply for permission to buy land of at most one rye, 1,600 square meters, for residential purposes in Bangkok, Pattaya City, as well as other municipalities and zones specified as residential areas under the target city's planning laws, he said. So again, highly restricted. It's not, it's not going to be just, oh, you can just go buy a rye land wherever you want or a house wherever you want. I suspect if this comes to fruition, which I am not certain is a foregone conclusion, but I suspect it, there's probably going to be like specific zones, probably move-ons, housing developments where foreigners can buy. Quoting further, the scheme, again, you know, it, it's a scheme. It's not yet in place. The scheme will be in effect for five years after publication in the Royal Gazette. Then the next question is, what happens after that? Quoting further, such land ownership can still always be revoked in case the landowner breaks the conditions of the ministerial regulation. Yeah, as we discussed before, it appears BOI is doing this under certain provisions accorded to them that really, it seems to me, the spirit of which were promulgated at a time when it was thought that these foreign landholding provisions, sort of concessions, were kind of in conjunction with like major industrial and major investment here in Thailand, you know, things under the BOI, major projects of that nature. That was always my understanding some 15 years of being out here, that those kind of limited exemptions to the foreign landholding requirement had primarily to do with like major projects, and that was why they were making the concession. As we'll get into here in a moment, there's even more to it. Quoting further, the Puatai party, meanwhile, says it opposes the plan to allow eligible foreigners to own land, saying it would not truly benefit the economy or ties. Quoting further, the 2002 government, led by the Tyrak Thai party, an earlier incarnation of the Puatai party, passed the regulation on foreign land ownership in 2002, and I didn't know this, because it had to meet the International Monetary Fund's debt repayment terms following the 1997 financial meltdown. So as anybody knows the history of the IMF, and you know, I don't mean to be a little bit sharp with, uh, or maybe a little bit critical of IMF policy, but IMF is not the favorite entity of countries around the world that begin having financial problems because IMF will come in and oppose a lot of stringent requirements on that country and will even impose, quite honestly, try to impose or, or encourage the imposition, let's say, of certain things that locals would find maybe not to be in their own best interest. A perfect example of this would be a landholding law in Thailand, and I suspect Thais were not altogether on board. I think it was like Robert Kiyosaki out there on YouTube, somebody like that, who said uh, IMF stands for I'm effed. You know, if you're a country and you have to call in the IMF, I'm effed. You know, like I think Britain had to do it back in like the 70s or the early 80s, whatever it was. It's never fun. And frankly, I, I really have issues, you know, with the whole notion that the IMF made Thailand do this in the first place under that particular law. You know, I don't know what was exactly going on at the time. I'm probably going to do some research on it now that I've gotten into this just to kind of see what exactly was going on. But, you know, all of this seems to me to be a little bit suspicious. I, I you know, I've made another video on here. I know, notwithstanding the fact I was born a foreigner, you know, I've naturalized, I am a Thai citizen. I, I do have concerns about any foreigners in Thailand owning real property, owning land. And again, I don't see how this is going to be like a huge boon in the short term that's just going to like completely right the ship coming off COVID and all of the economic devastation that that caused. 
you know, so on the one hand, I don't really see how we're going to, it's going to be some magic, you know, bullet that's going to, that's going to save us all from this thing. I, I really don't see that. In fact, policy wise, I see, I see a lot of other policies being discussed out there and proposals which have come online, which I think are far more likely to sustainably boost Thailand's economy rather than this. The other thing to think about is not the immediate term, in my opinion, and maybe this is me talking more as a Thai, but you know, in the short term, I don't really see this being a huge mover of the economic needle, but in the long term, I could see this having substantially negative impact on Thailand. I mean, imagine if a number of foreigners over time begin buying up Thailand and become, well, they become quite dominant in a particular area and they are kind of rooted by ownership of Thai real estate. I can see, I'm not saying that that's a foregone conclusion that that's, that, that is a bad thing. But what I am saying, it's cause for pause, it's cause for concern. I do think under these circumstances, and not to get too political here, I think Puatai brings up a good point that this should be looked at much, much more, much, much more in detail. And, you know, I think Thai should really think about it. Okay, that's my rant over uh, as far as me being sort of a Thai. For foreigners, again, I don't think this is a foregone conclusion. You know, the press is talking about this like it's almost already happened. It hasn't. This thing has yet to be promulgated. There's clear opposition to it. You know, I think generally speaking, the mood in Thailand, while it may be able to get behind in a limited sense a movement like this, I don't really think that when most Thais sit down and kind of think about it, that they're really gonna be overly positive toward this. So I'm not saying I know where this is gonna end up, but what I will say is I don't think it's a foregone conclusion. It's just gonna be an easy thing for foreigners to come in and buy real property anytime soon.